Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes of Postgres. My name is Lucas and today we're going to talk about Postgres locking, what it is concerning, what lightweight locks are, as well as the lock lock weight setting in Postgres. We'll start with this blog post by David from the Crunchy Data team. If you want to monitor which locks Postgres uses, you can use the PG locks view. The PG locks view is something you can query similar to PG set activity. There are a couple of columns there that help you identify which type of lock is the exclusive or the shared lock. The most important thing to know here is that there's a granted field, and this lets you know if a lock is currently granted to a particular connection, or if it's waiting on another connection to finish, to release its lock so that it can then take its lock. Generally, the way to think about this view is that a lot of things take, for example, access share locks. And as David states here, it's not necessarily a good idea to look at the count of locks. That doesn't necessarily tell you much, but what can be helpful is to look at the number of locks that are not granted currently, as well as which specific statements are waiting for something. If you were to do a very simple monitoring query, having something like select count star for PG locks were not granted, that would give you a sense for how much the system is blocked by locks not being granted. If you saw a lot of lock contention where things were waiting for the same lock, this would give you an indication of that. Let's say you have a production issue where you're seeing a lot of locks currently being held then the best thing you can do is query the PGSA activity table and query using the PG blocking PIDs function. What we're doing here is we're querying for all connections that are currently waiting on a lock. And then it gives us all the connections that are holding a lock that are keeping us from getting that lock. This helps you identify which connection is causing the problems. And then you can go and potentially cancel that, for example. The other kind of locks that David talks about here are lightweight locks. And you might be familiar with those. If you look at piece activity, you see something like LW lock data read, for example, or buffer content LW lock. Those are Postgres internal locks. If you want to know more about that, you can actually take a look at the Postgres source documentation. I often find that useful to get a sense for how Postgres hackers themselves describe this. In the lock manager, which does a lot of the work in Postgres, it describes lightweight locks. Um, and these are typically used for controlling access to data structures and shared memory. Shared memory is the memory area in Postgres that's shared between different connections. You don't really have to interact with this. There's no way to explicitly take a lock or do other direct interactions with this, but it is helpful to understand which resource in Postgres is busy and which part of the system is doing a lot of work. So the lock type that you would usually interact with and the one that David describes in this post or what this here calls regular locks, heavyweight locks. Those are the ones where you have things like that lot detection, this behavior around transaction end. And this is what Postgres describes here as user-driven lock requests. If you interact with a lock related command, then that is all about the regular locks, not about other lock types. The other thing I want to mention around locking is a very useful log event for finding lock problems. This older blog post by Gabriel from the PG experts team talks about the log lock weight setting. Postgres has a process that checks for deadlocks. Log lock weights piggybacks on the deadlock logic to also check if a lock has been waiting for something for longer than a second. The log lock weight setting is not on by default. You have to change the server configuration. If you have the log lock weights enabled, it actually logs to the Postgres log and it will give you something like the select statements process here is still waiting for this access share log for longer than one second. The other thing that's useful, if the lock was released and then a select could finish, then you can actually get the second statement here, which says this process acquired this type of lock after this time. If you have locking problems, this lets you know how much of your execution time of a query was spent just waiting for locks. That's why the log lock wait setting is something that I always enable. You may wonder, is there performance cost of enabling log lock weights? And the good news is there is because this deadlock detection logic always runs automatically in the background already. You're not really adding anything new. All you're adding is a little log message that gets output on production systems. I always turn on the log lock weight setting because it's just that useful. Thank you so much for listening. This was five minutes of Postgres. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about next week's episode and talk to you next week.